Mr. Nair, uh, good morning and it is indeed a very proud moment. Uh, so congratulations first uh, from the entire team of CNBC TV 18. But you had no prior experience in building a warship. So just wanted to understand what are the challenges that you faced? Uh, see, we had uh, a strong experience in building uh, large commercial vessels. Also, more sophisticated uh, functional commercial vessels for uh, West Europe. So the experience uh, in, in, the, in the technology was already there. But uh, the challenges was, uh, see here, here the number of stakeholders and the kind of complexity, the size and scale is much more larger. So uh, when, when you have different stakeholders uh, involved, multiple uh, uh, systems involved, there, there are always gray areas. So ironing out gray areas, and uh, getting these entire stakeholders to work towards a uh, single uh, purpose, that was a most important challenge. And uh, this probably like uh, led to a lot of uh, going back and forth uh, uh, during, during, during various days of the time. Mm. Mr. Nair, hi, good morning, Prashant, this side. And congratulations once again, sir. I mean, it's indeed Thanks a enough. very happy, proud moment. Uh, just a, a quick thing. So, uh, are there are there any other uh, uh, sort of aircraft carriers? Uh, are you uh, is Cochin Shipyard going, going to be building the next one as well? Because I think there is one one more in works, right? It's it's uh, not not, uh, not uh, officially uh, confirmed. There have been uh, discussions uh, at the, the levels and the, the military happening, but then uh, a formal decision on the next aircraft carrier is not yet uh, announced. Okay. okay. Uh, right. Mr. Nair, uh, just a, a quick point. This was this entire project, the uh, the approval to build this from the cabinet came through, uh, uh, you know, when uh, Prime Minister uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee was, uh, was there, right? I mean, under his uh, leadership, when the first approval came through. So it's taken a long time for this to finally see the day of light, uh, the lighter day. Now, if the next, pro if, if there is uh, an order for another aircraft carrier which comes through, do you think the timelines are going to be, uh, you know, very, uh, much shorter as compared to what we've seen in this case? Uh, I see we need to understand this uh, holistically. I see around 2004 is when Cochin uh, Shipyard uh, received the letter of intent and uh, the contracts came in much later and the contract was, it was not a single contract, it was uh, three separate contracts. Uh, because it, this is a mammoth uh, project hmm. and uh, it has been designed and constructed sort of concurrently. They, in the, in the naval parlance, we call this uh, concurrent design and build. So as you move forward, uh, like initially the platform was uh, configured, some of the major functional systems were configured. Then as you move forward, you got gotten into the weaponry and the other systems. So how it moves forward is... Uh, it's, it's not very easy to explain, but then uh, such long projects, multiple systems, just to give you the feel of, uh, see there are about 550 companies involved. Some of the largest uh, Indian industries, like uh, from the from the PSU space, we had uh, people like Bharat Electronics, uh, HL, uh, Sail, uh, uh, involved via Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited. From the private industry, Larson and Tubro, Pata, Advanced Systems, uh, Kirloska Pneumatics. Now, all these people, when they get uh, involved, Watsila, India Limited, Johnson Controls. Now, when you're getting involved, there are conflicting requirements from uh, various systems because systems and solutions come from the OEMs. And when there are gray areas, gray areas hard to be ironed out. DRDO steps in, uh, the naval, uh, various directorates of the Navy step in. This is how uh, uh, such, a, such a project moves. So for India as a country, it's not just about Cochin Shikar. As a country, like there was a steep learning uh, effect here. But every entity involved here, for example, whether it's LNT or Bharat Electronics, there was a steep learning effect. Now, within the country, uh, if, you, if you look at it, as a, as a nation, today there is much more learning in this whole space. Cochin Shipyard Limited has been at the center space. We have held this with focus over these long uh, years. Formal uh, construction actually started in 2007. And uh, but for COVID, probably this vessel would have been delivered uh, early part of 2021. So uh, we, are, we are talking something like 13 years uh, from keeling happened in 2009. So from keeling, it's now been 13 years.
Now, if you are talking about a next uh, aircraft carrier, if you are talking about something which is uh, similar, at least on the platform size and scale, but uh, we can we can make the requisite uh, adjustments and changes for uh, capturing the most emerging technologies on the weaponry side. If it is that way, then probably we are talking something like seven to eight years, maybe uh, around that period from a firm decision. Okay. But if we are talking about something that's totally different, then then we'll have to wait and uh, watch and see what exactly are those differences. Mr. Because uh, the, one difference actually, from, uh, uh, you know, Oh, yeah, sorry. One difference is the size itself. Uh, so some believe that the next one should be much larger, 65,000 tons uh, more. Uh, you know, is it, uh, is, 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 will that uh, largely shift, uh, sort of be in your guidance? That, that, will, that, will, that, that will definitely, definitely have an impact. That, that will definitely have an impact. Uh, see, see, the thing is actually like uh, we, need to, we need to get our um, uh, staff requirements very clear and okay. that is for the Navy, uh, what they want and uh, how it should move forward. Mm. But if there are significant changes, I think I think there would be uh, time again would become a uh, challenge mm. because uh, see, these are entirely custom made. See, mm. all the systems, all the systems, it's not, uh, you're not procuring things off the shelf. Yeah. Mm. Every uh, OEM, everyone, uh, whether it's the indigenous uh, components or whether the, uh, the imported components in this, is all custom made. Mm. And it's not readily available. It is, and it is not that every uh, see aircraft carriers are not built just like that anywhere else in the world. Also, so if you are picking up something from Russia, it's not that the Russians have got ultra experience in this. For them, also there's the steep learning in in a in a new system. So uh, the the trick would be to try and uh, keep the platform as close as possible to where we are. Mm. Uh, uh, changes uh, to the extent uh, that can be adaptable, let us use that word, uh, that is possible. But if we want a totally new thing, then I think we'll have to go back to scratch and uh, the learnings will be there, but then uh, the project will be from scratch. Uh, Mr. Nair, uh, can you tell us about the future in terms of any more projects in shipbuilding that you're looking at? Uh, what would the order pipeline be? Because even in the quarter gone by, the numbers have been very good. You've, you're sitting on a revenue growth of almost 35% as of Q1. Uh, what does the future look like? Uh, I see, uh, the order book looks uh, generally positive. Uh, we have both the defense uh, order book and the uh, commercial order book. The defense order book, uh, we have uh, eight number of uh, ASW warfare corvettes, uh, which we have already concluded with the Navy, which is about a... 6,500 crore order, all the 8 percent together. And uh, we, are, uh, we are L1 in uh, the next generation missile vessels. This is another 6 percent. The contracts are yet to be signed, but we hope the contract should be coming in. Uh, we, we were expecting it around, around, around now, but then probably in the next uh, few months, let's put it that way, uh, the contract should be coming. So with the defense, uh, Eight plus six to come, so fourteen vessels. The NGMBs are about roughly about a ten thousand crore project. So that's the defense side. Uh, now uh, we have uh, secured uh, contracts from uh, Germany for eight numbers uh, mid-size uh, coastal river coastal vessels. This we feel is a very important break for us uh, from Germany from the niche uh, European short sea market. We have signed contracts with the uh, dredging operation of India for a very large uh, dredger, which is about uh, an 850 crore uh, contract, and at least one more uh, expected shortly. And this, again, is a very important contract for us because this is the first time India is building such large uh, dredgers under the Make in India. It's only because of the Make in India insistence that uh, the largest and the most uh, technologically advanced company from Netherlands, Messrs. IHC, has teamed up with Cochin Shipyard for the dredger. We are sensing uh, significant traction from Europe on uh, vessels to support the emerging uh, wind energy market in Europe. And we are pretty hopeful to secure contracts from Europe uh, in that regard. So I'm, I'm generally bullish on the order book. And uh, things should go generally well uh, for us. Mm. Mr. Nair, uh, uh, I have two questions. One, uh, and briefly, if you can, uh, is the is the debate is there a, a debate in terms of a path ahead between building more carriers versus submarines, 
Uh, or is going to be a combination uh, of both? This one. Is, uh, there's, a, there's a debate on which, uh, first, uh, like, uh, Pajin Shukad is not involved. Oh, yes, there is a debate, but uh, we are not, we are, we are shipbuilders here. If we asked to build a ship, we build a ship. <laughs> but uh, that, that's, a, that's actually a part of a military strategy. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, second question. Uh, with all that you said, it's good to hear that you are winning contracts, uh, out, you know, sort of in Germany, Europe, and uh, what you outline. Uh, is the pace, uh, uh, for from an investor's point of view, will the pace of uh, earnings increase materially over the next many years? I mean, is there a long-range guidance you can give us, sir? Uh, see, uh, again, again, I should be cautious here. See, this particular year, the current financial year uh, where we are, we shouldn't be expecting uh, too much of a uh, increase kind of a thing because uh, see, we, are, we are currently on a set of projects, as I said, but we are on the steel part of it. So we will get into the machinery and the more, uh, let's say, more uh, lucrative part of the contracts uh, as we move forward in the next uh, few years. So uh, we, are, we are generally guided. See, this is an industry where you can't, you can't just go for steel up or steep down, we need to we target uh, consistency over over the long term. This is if you, if you look at our uh, track record from where we got listed in 2017 till now, I think uh, we have been uh, fairly consistent in our growth, and I think uh, that kind of consistency, if we can actually take forward, I should be uh, happy, and this would be our targets. But. Uh, uh, we are not in the industry where we expect huge ups or uh, sudden, uh, so sudden jumps. I think that would be too much to expect from our industry. But uh, consistency, consistent growth, uh, trying to hold on to good levels of profitability, this is this is a challenge we are doing. And and mind you, like uh, we are we are not just a ship building company. We are a ship repair company also. Yeah. And ship repair uh, is uh, we are, we are integrated uh, both together. So ship repair is also something where we are seeing good traction. Uh, so this 10,000 crore order book that you currently have for the defense segment, how much of this yeah. could you execute in the first year, that is in FY23, FY24? Can you just break it up for us? Because you said that FY23 okay. revenue okay. growth will be marginal. I'm just trying to understand yeah. what the numbers could be based on your order book. It would be a bit difficult uh, because uh, often uh, it would be a bit difficult. But then see, the, this uh, Neville order book is to be executed over a, uh, let's say, Eight, eight and odd years time frame. So, so you can you can see that's about a sixteen thousand crore order book to be executed over an uh, eight and odd year. So that is what should come out of an average from the defense part uh, onto the shipbuilding side. So that that's let, let's put it a uh, two thousand ish crore kind of a thing coming in a year. But then that's not uh, I I can't say that this year we will have that much because as I said you know we are on the steel uh, uh, side right now. We, you will have to mix this also with the commercial orders uh, which we have. So the commercial orders happen much more faster. For example, the entire uh, eight uh, German vessels we need to deliver. The first vessels will have to be delivered in 22 months' time. And we already, this contract was signed in March uh, of this year. So from March 22nd month, we deliver the first vessel and then one vessel every two months. So that's a much more faster, uh, commercial vessels are delivered uh, much more faster. Uh, pace. So when you, when you when you actually mix this, uh, I normally would guide uh, anywhere between uh, 12 to 15 percentage uh, annual uh, growth rate. This this would be what we are targeting. Mr. Nair, uh, it's a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much, and congratulations from all of us once again. Uh, Thanks a lot Thank uh, for for uh, for what is uh, what you've done. Thank you very much, and uh, hope to hear more from you as we go along.